Hello and welcome again. This channel is called Al Tzadu. Al Tzadu means old customs or old ways. And in this channel, we talk about the Saxons and the Scandinavians and the other tribes in the far northern parts of Europe that venerated the Aesir, Odin, Thor, etc., the, the Nordic gods as they're known today. Um, we discuss historical heathenry. And today I'm going to talk about Walpurgis Night and misinformation. Now, if you don't mind me starting out, I, I did a blog recently called Folk Traditionalist versus Reconstructionist, two different approaches. And I compared these two approaches. And disclaimer, I'm not saying any new ways, any Christian ways, any Wiccan ways in heathenry is wrong. But what I am talking about in this channel is historical facts and what historical pre-Christian heathenry was. So Harvey Graham, for example, in his article, The Roots of Pagan Ecology in the Journal of Contemporary Religion in 1994, he stated very clearly that contemporary pagan festivals that rely on the wheel of the year are based to varying degrees on folk traditions, regardless of actual historical pagan practices. So the wheel or the wheel of the year, that's the Wiccan wheel of the year. Solstices, equinoxes, and quasi midpoints. Um, and this is fact. Contemporary pagan festivals do rely on the wheel of the year. They are based on folk traditions, often, which were in the church for hundreds of years. But people today, folk traditionalists, practice these regardless of actual historical pagan practices. Again, I'm not saying they're doing it wrong. What I am saying is, is that they didn't study, they didn't get educated, and we're going to discuss historical fact today. And we do have sources. We know exactly who St. Walpurgis was. We know exactly how she lived her life, and we absolutely know her deeds. She murdered heathens. She burnt down their sacred groves. She preached the destruction of heathenry. And when people did not accept forced baptism, and they were beheaded for that by Christian armies, she did not raise any objection. As a matter of fact, she encouraged it. But yet today, heathens celebrate a Walpurgis night. So what is the situation? I've kind of hinted on it already. I mean, when I became um, a heathen, I had a past. And first I was raised in a Christian home. Then I studied the New Testament and I realized that it had a completely different message from the Old Testament. So I rejected the New Testament, converted to Judaism, and then I studied archeology span and then I realized that the ground showed that the Bible wasn't true. So then I became an atheist, and then I joined atheist groups, and on these atheist groups, like the Freedom From Religion Foundation and other groups, now don't get me wrong, these aren't anti-pagan groups, but they are groups that don't want their tax dollars going to support religious public events. Um, they, want their they want Christians to pay the cost of their own religion, Jews to pay the cost for their own religion, etc. So they're critical of religion, but they also studied it. And what I found when I became an atheist um, is that many atheists and agnostics, agnostics knew more about heathen traditions than most heathens did because they studied religion. One of my favorite YouTube channels is Religion for Breakfast. I really like Dr. Henry. I like studying world religions. Fascinated by it. Um, many atheists do. I've never asked Dr. Henry if he's a theist. I don't know him. I'm sure if I send him an email, he'd probably respond. But it's also a private question. Um, but he states very clearly in his videos, you know, there's nothing wrong to study other religions. And, and I like to study other religions. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and I do post blog articles discussing facts and actual origins of holy, holy days. And often I get complaints. I get praise and I get complaints. But of course, if you're on social media, you're going to have people that like you and people that don't like you. That's the nature of social media. However, I think I am different from most of the leaders in modern neo-paganism, um, or at least in, under the heathenry umbrella. I mean, I, when I started out as a heathen, I kept the Wiccan Wheel of the Year, but then I kept studying and I realized it wasn't historical. So then I admitted that I was wrong, and then I started to post accurate information. Um, I see a hurdle that a lot of modern pagan movements have if they've been teaching one thing for so long, they are scared and they refuse and they won't change their ways or they won't even do this. They won't say, 
we're going to continue to do the new ways because we choose to do new ways or Christian ways or Wiccan ways. Um, we acknowledge that they weren't historical, but we still feel they're legitimate. If they did that, no one would have a beef with them. But what goes on is that many orgs post misinformation and they claim that what they do is historical. And again, if they were honest about it, I wouldn't have to post these videos. And if they were educated, they wouldn't celebrate things like Walpurgis Night. They, they would use the term Beltane like Aidan Kelly used, which I'll get to shortly. So let's talk about the origins of Walpurgis Night. Where did this start? And here's a screenshot of my blog article from altodo.com. Why do so many celebrate a holy day named after a saint who persecuted heathenry? So what's the background? Who is Walpurgis? Let's discuss that first. So she is the daughter of Richard the Pilgrim, who's also known as St. Richard of Wessex. Richard Mary, married Winna, who is the sister of St. Boniface. So Walpurga is the daughter of Richard and Winna, and she's the niece of St. Boniface. Yes, that St. Boniface who chopped down Thor's Oak or Donar's Oak, which was a holy place of the Chatty, about 30 miles south of the Saxon Ermensul. This was on the border of Saxony in the modern state of Hesse. So like the, the term Hessians, um, if you know American history, Hessian soldiers fought um, in the Revolutionary War. Um, well, this is where they came from. Um, so the German name is Hesse. Now, Richard the Pilgrim's first miracle was saving the life of his three-year-old son, Willibald, who was also a future saint of Bavaria. Richard erected a great crucifix in public, laid his son Willibald at the base of the crucifix and prayed, healing his son. His fame spread in around 710. Um, that's when Winnie and Richard fathered Wildberg, which is her actual Old English name. Um, her Latin name is Walperga. Walperga would destroy, as I said in, uh, previously, that she would destroy Saxon sacred groves. She'd preach the destruction of the, uh, the Ermans of the Saxons, which had come to pass. And Richard's life mission was the same as St. Boniface's life mission, to convert all heathen Germanic tribes forcefully if need be. I mean, they chopped the Ehrman soul down. They didn't uh, convince the Saxons to destroy it themselves. St. Boniface actually chopped down Thor's oak. He didn't preach to them and ask them to freely chop down. He chopped it down. Um, he didn't give them a choice. Um, so that is the legacy of St. Boniface. So more on St. Walpurga. She was entrusted with the Abbey of Wimbom when her father and brother, Richard and Willibald did a missionary trip to the Holy Land. She was 11 years old at the time, and then she would be educated there for 26 more years. Um, and at the age of 37, she went on to her permanent mission trip into Frankie and Saxony. Uh, she traveled with her brothers, Willibald and Winnebald, to assist St. Boniface in his evangelization efforts. I'd love to know if St. Walpurga was there when they chopped down um, the Donar Oak. I don't know, but it's an interesting question. Um, but hey, you know, the family were monks and nuns with St. Boniface, um, and they stood for the destruction of holy places, and they should be infamously remembered by heathens. Um, while Perga would become the first female author in England and Germany, so she did write two Vitas. Vita means life of, um, and naturally she wrote the, the life of her family members. And this, again, made her the first female author um, in Germany and England. Um, and her brother appointed her to be a nun at the double monastery of uh, Heidenheim and Hanenkam, which was founded by her other brother, St. Willibald. And at Willibald's death in 751, at Winnebald's death in 751, Walpurga became the abbess. Now, many Ossetor have argued with me that, that Walpurgis Night has to be on the exact same date of a prior Saxon or Germanic tribe's heathen holiday. Um, it must be because it's so popular today. I mean, that's silly. Um, Martin Luther King Day is popular today, and that doesn't make it a pre-Christian heathen holy day. Um, so, you know, um, it's a flawed argument. Um, and it's completely false because I could give the simple argument that fixed solar dates were unknown to the Germanic tribes as their calendar were lunar based. Even Tacitus, which I probably should have quoted him here, when he wrote in the second century about the Germanic tribes, he stated that they met on new moons and full moons, which was the luckiest times to gather. So, I mean, we have information out of the gate 
And Tacitus was a Roman pagan. He was not a Christian. But we have evidence out of the gate that the Germanic tribes had days of the moon. Even the word month is related to the word moon in all Germanic languages, which includes Scandinavian languages. So the idea that, you know, fixed solar dates um, was the pre-Christian heathen way is absolutely incorrect. Um, so completely unfounded on their part. And let me get back, you know, full traditionalists often are celebrating pagan festivals um, that are based on folk traditions, almost always folk traditions that have been in the church for centuries, regardless of the actual pagan practices historically. And again, I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong outside of spreading misinformation, and they're not being honest. I mean, they say they did their homework, but Google is not a good place to do homework. So let's discuss now that we know Walpurga and we know her family and what they stood for. Let's discuss the origin of Walpurgis Night. Um, so St. Walpurgis Night began with the fame of Walpurga. She accomplished miracles. The two earliest miracle narratives of Walpurga are in these. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these names, but one of them is the Vita Secunda. Um, but these are her two Latin um, narratives. Um, both were written after she died. So what is a saint? Um, my definition of a saint is a dead sinner revised and edited. Um, just like the sagas, scholars say they were embellished. They were written down after the fact and they'd been embellished over time. I have no doubt that St. Walpurga probably accomplished no miracles because um, I do not believe that, uh, you know, just by praying the rosary, you're going to alter the laws of nature. And I'm not attacking Christian prayer. I'm just stating, you know, the laws of nature, scientific laws. Um, I have no doubt that St. Walpurga did not do any miracles, um, but people attribute miracles to her um, because, well, um, I guess that's the nature of faith. Um, but the first event to bring about Walpurga's night as a holiday on May 1st, 870, the relics of Walpurga were transferred to Eichstatt in Germany. And there her abbey was built to house her relics. And while Perga's bones were placed in a rock tomb behind the altar where mass was done. And I've seen this because Whittakin's supposed grave, which I don't believe it's actually his grave, is actually behind the altar where mass is done. And I've been to his church in the Whittakin Museum in Hereford, and I've seen this. Um, so this, this is true with um, Walpurga as well. Um, and... Um, after the mass started, her tomb allegedly began to exude miraculous therapeutic oil, which drew pilgrims to her shrine for centuries. And it still does today. People still go to the shrine today. Just like, you know, people like 20 years ago, I remember in the news a lot, this prayer, this picture of Mary, it's crying. Um, you know, people felt that those were miracles and they went and saw these pictures of the mother of Jesus crying. Um, to touch the tears and have a miracle. Um, the same thing is going on with St. Walpurga's tomb. So what's the second event to bring about Walpurga's night as a holiday? In the 11th century, Anno II, the Archbishop of Cologne, Cologne um, he declared Walpurga's night to be celebrated on the eve of May Day. Um, and I list the sources here. I'm not going to try to read those or pronounce those, um, but pause and look them up. Um, please note that Anno II himself was canonized by Pope Lucius III. However, canonized means he didn't he, he didn't become a saint. Um, he was the founder or co-founder of monasteries, several of them, and he was a builder of churches. He advocated clerical celibacy. Hopefully, he didn't molest children, um, and he introduced a strict discipline in a number of monasteries. He was a man of great energy and ability whose action in recognizing Alexander II, I'm talking about historical people here, was of utmost consequence for Henry IV in Germany. So if you know your German history, you understand who Henry IV was. Um, he's the patent of gout sufferers. Anna was the subject of two important literary works, um, the Vita Anonis and the Middle High German Das Anoiled. So the first event to bring about St. Walpurgis Night as a holiday in Asatru was 
um, actually the founder of Wicca. Um, in 1960s, an American witch and poet named Aidan Kelly was looking for Shabbat, or Sabbat names, more interesting than winter solstice, spring equinox, summer solstice, and autumn equinox. He ended up adopting Ostara, Yule, Maven, which is a Celtic holiday, and uh, um, Wicca is a modern word based on the Old English word for witch. Now, I do want to shout out to Aidan Kelly here. I'm, first of all, I'm not anti-Wicca. If Wicca is your path, great. You know, um, not attacking in any way. But Aidan Kelly was smart enough to use Beltane instead of Walpurgis Night, whereas Asatru um, and Asatru Orgs choose Walpurgis Night. Um, you know, Aidan Kelly didn't understood the history and since the word Wicca is re related to the term witch, he understood that Walpurga persecuted witches and um, he at least had some education himself, if not a lot of education. I haven't studied a lot about Aidan Kelly, but Aidan Kelly certainly knew who Walpurga was and um, understood that she was famous for spending her life fighting against witchcraft and heathen magic. Um, you know, uh, I'll, if you want to pause um, to read the scholar's takes on it, um, she was an English missionary who was against the practice of magic. You can read those quotes. But uh, I do want to focus on the second event to bring about Walpurgis Night as a holiday in Asatru. Um, and a shout out to Steve McNall. And I understand a lot of people think he's racist. And may, maybe he is. I'm not here to say he's racist or he isn't. But he absolutely founded Asatru in the United States, whether you like that or not. He did. Um, uh, we are certainly in al do against all forms of racism and bigotry, all forms, all of it. Um, we do not discriminate. Um, so, you know, regardless of your view on if he's a racist or not, he absolutely was the founder of Asatru, and he is, in a sense, the founder of Asatru Orthodoxy and Orthopraxy. Even uh, universalist Asatru groups follow all of McNallan's teachings for the most part, but the um, ones that they deem racist, i.e. anything folkish. Um, so, um, you know, the Wiccan Wheel of the Year was adopted by Asatru, and in fairness, McNallan, when he founded um, the Viking Brotherhood, which um, now is known as the AFA, um, it's gone through a couple name changes before it's gotten to its current name, but, you know, uh, this started before the World Wide Web was out, and you can get the Eddas and Sagas for free in PDF form on a website pretty much anywhere and everywhere of Google. Um, so, you know, but I do want to shout out to Garmin Lord, the founder of Thetish Belief here, because he, in the early 1970s, went to a library and found Bede's calendar, um, which means he did some research. So... And, you know, what's interesting is a lot of the complaints that I get today are, are by adherence to Theodish belief or Thetish belief. Um, and yet they were very critical of Asatru. They were two competing unit uh, movements um, in the 70s. Um, one was certainly Old English based and the other one was more Wiccan Wheel of the Year based with Norse deities. Um, but, you know, uh, shout out to Garmin for doing research in a library. Um, Awesome. So the third event to bring about Walpurgis Night as a holiday in Asatru is a lack of interest in education by almost all Asatru are today. I mean, honestly, almost every Asatru I come across online has not read any Eddas or Sagas or even a paragraph of them. Of course, there are a few that do. I mean, al do are practitioners of old ways and Reconstructionists do read the historical sources to reconstruct historical pre-Christian heathenry. Um, no educated Reconstructionist is going to celebrate the night called Walpurgis Night. Now, not only is it not historical, but we're educated enough to know exactly who she was and what she did and what she stood for, and we stand for the opposite. Um, so, um, you know, my blog article where I took this from, I mean, the farce and leadership, I'm probably a little too blunt. And I do agree, and this is some of the comments, you know, some, sometimes I am a little too blunt. Um, but I guess you always know where you stand with me, and I'm always honest to my crowd. And when I make a mistake, I say, hey, listen, guys, I thought Yule used to be on a solstice, but I've changed my mind. Here's the evidence that it was on a full moon. Here are some other scholars who believe that. And here's their, you know, Ph.D. writings that show when it really was. And here's some saga references. Here's some historical quotes showing that it was in January. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I... I learned over time and I kept studying sources, but I, I am able to admit 
that I've changed my mind on something and I can do that. I really challenge Asatru words to do that. Um, you know, if you know something isn't historical, but you want to do it anyways, how about be honest with you about it and say, we know it's not historical, but we like to do it anyways. And we're going to continue to do it anyways because we find it edifying. Um, you know, what, what can you do with that comment? But praise it because it's honest and it's not filled with misinformation. But that's not what's going on in Asatru today. So I am calling out for a little integrity. And, you know, part of the reason why I did this this video is because, you know, people are like, man, you used your blog article used to be Asatru's most embarrassing night of the year, Walpurgis Night. Um, yeah, there are times that I am a little too blunt, but um, in fairness, you know, like if anyone has read the Old Testament, they should know of a festival called Purim, and the bad guy in that festival is Haman. Um, Jews would never celebrate Haman. They would only cringe at his name as they do when the Megillah is read in their synagogues on Purim. Um, how is it today that heathens do not know what they're doing and they follow crowds? Um, this is why atheists say religion is the blind leading the blind. Um, but here's a great quote to conclude the video. Between Eastern Pentecost, there were many other celebrations and feast days. In Germany, for example, was celebrated the Feast of St. Walpurga or Walpurgis Nacht on April 30th, the eve of May Day. Walpurga was an 8th century Anglo-Saxon nun, a missionary to Franconia, particularly to Bischof, Bischofsheim on the Tauber just south of Nikloshausen. Her bones were translated that is moved on May 1st, which became her feast day sometime during the 870s to Eichstadt, where her brother Willibald had been bishop. Ever since then, only the liquid has oozed out of the rock with her, where her tomb rests and has been renowned among pilgrims for its great healing power. So if you don't mind me saying, you know, the eight point wheel of the year is not equal, the spokes are not equal. So for example, I've had many people get pissed off and say, of course, they." May 1st is holy. It's exactly halfway between an equinox and, and a solstice, which is incorrect. It's really 40 days after an equinox and 50 days before a solstice. Um, again, um, we should study and we should think before we speak and actually count to make sure that what we're saying is correct. Um, so if you like a historical approach, just want to be educated. You can still follow the new ways, but you want to understand what historical pre-Christian history was. Visit us at altsadu.com. Visit our blog at altsadu.com backslash blog. Join us on the Facebook group Altsadu Sex and Heathenry. And of course, like and subscribe. Thank you so much.